god damn <laughs> I promise I'd stop doing that. Sorry, guys. Hello, friends. What's good, y'all? What's good in the hood? Welcome back to another one of my videos, guys. It's been a minute since I've talked about some things. I've been traveling. I've been working on a few other projects on the side. Some big updates coming soon, actually. So hold off for those. But today, we're going to be talking about something really interesting. It's a question from one of you guys. And the question is, please make a video on how to show your work and your projects as a data analyst. So we're actually going to dive deep into that and how exactly I do it and how I recommend for you guys to do it as well. First, and foremost, you have to build a portfolio. That is the number one thing you need to do. Trust me, I always assume that, oh, I'm not a UX designer. I'm not a creative design person. Why do I need a portfolio? Well, you know why? Because the competition is thick, y'all. It is wild. It's like the wild, wild west out there. So you have to stand out. The internet is a reflection of who you are. It's a first impression glance that does need to be taken a little bit more seriously. You want to think about how you want to be perceived and dive deeper into that. So when you think about how exactly you want to go about showing your projects and showcasing them, it's going to be sort of like a pipeline, right? So there's three main steps. There's going to be the content strategy, which is the building, right, of the idea is what exactly you want to showcase, right? This is the planning stage. Next, we're going to have the actual creation stage, right? So we're going to be thinking about what we actually want to make and what exactly it's going to take to make that, right? So we're going to be needing skills like video editing, photo editing, just like taking screenshots, right? Posting on different platforms. That's something that you do want to be thinking about. And then lastly, the last stage is going to be distribution, right? And I don't just mean on these platforms per se, like a YouTube or like your website, but it's also just di distributing it out more, right? Because YouTube and all these other platforms will have that automatically, but at the same time, you want to do some more marketing on your end. So distributing outward, right? So it could be on Instagram, could be on LinkedIn, could be on Twitter. Those are all just good platforms where people are showcasing and highlighting their work. Let's use my own work as an example. I personally post a lot of data content, but I also post lifestyle as well because that's how I want to be perceived. It would not, however, make sense if I all of a sudden started posting Mr. B style content, like game show style content that was just like, hey, like if you win this competition, you will win a million dollars. It just doesn't make any sense. That's just not a clear reflection of me and who I am. This process, first and foremost, is going to take the longest, and it's going to take a lot of self-discovery and reflection. But you need to first have content strategy. Now, you might be wondering, what's content strategy? It's pretty much the underlying themes and ideas that you want to be putting out into your world, which is the content that you create. What I personally love about content and honestly just all this video work is that I can do this thing called world build and world building is really important when you are telling a good story and deriving this narrative right and this is what you want to be driving first and foremost in all of your work so my first recommendation to you is to think about what exactly you want to be posting and what you want to showcase if it's through data projects okay what skill sets do you want to show if it's for UX design role right like do you want to show you know Figma do you want to show that you know X Y and Z about design right are you a material designer are you AR, XR designer or developer in some way, right? Like there's so many different facets that you can dive into when it comes to your project and what exactly you want to showcase. Now that we have the guide, right? The North Star, the direction. Let's talk about what tangible things that you can do to show your work and your projects. So the first one is of course going to be your website. You want to be having a website in 2024. And that's why I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Not there yet, not there yet. But if anyone from Squarespace is watching, hit your boy up. But I generally do use Squarespace as my website builder. It's just the easiest one to use. There are other ones out there like Wix and Webflow. Wix is definitely probably the most easiest one. Webflow is the one where you need to know the most technical skills. So you want to know a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, things like that. <laughs> Excuse me. But Squarespace has always been a good middle ground for me where I don't need to know a lot of coding, but it's good to know just how websites are made and things like that. And since I have that background, it's just easier for me. That's besides the point. Having a website is the most important thing. Just having your projects out there in an organized fashion will be instrumental. On my website, I have all of my projects from all my past companies, mainly just the bigger ones, I would say. You can choose like one or two big projects, or if you were involved in just a couple, like one, one thing, then you can just highlight that as well. But when you are displaying your projects, you want to think about the skills sets you want to showcase. So in my website, I really highlight the SQL for me because that's one of my biggest strong suits. And at the same time, I highlight the data visualization as well as the data engineering sides, which focus more on the ETL process and highlighting my skill sets there. 
So that's something that I really try to highlight and make sure I emphasize. So whatever skill sets you want to do, make sure you are emphasizing that as well in your website. Don't just show things and projects because no one really cares, right? People care about your skill sets, the results, and really like just bare minimum what you did, right? It's not super complicated. I feel like many times we as portfolio builders, we overcomplicate it by trying to include everything. There's no need to include everything. Just include the most important parts, which is beginning, middle, end, and results, right? But yes, website, number one thing. Next one is going to be posting on GitHub. Now this is more if you are on the developer side, I would say, but even for a data project, I think it's very important as well to post on GitHub. This is definitely going to lean more towards data science, I would say. I personally don't because I'm not a data scientist. I'm more of a data analyst and business intelligence engineer. But I would say it is important to have this if you are on that data science side. Highlight your Python notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, right? You can highlight all these things in that GitHub. And honestly, since data science nowadays is more of a developer sort of role, it will be understood and easily digestible by those devs, right? Like in all of this, you want to think about your audience and who's going to be reading it. Devs love GitHub, they live in GitHub, right? So they don't mind reading it, but designers don't live in GitHub. So that's not the appropriate platform to be using. You want to think about your users and cater towards them. And then after GitHub, another good one could also be Medium, which is a place where you can write articles and things like that, where you can also highlight your work. People who are more text oriented, that's very positive for them as well. If that's what you prefer too. I would recommend yeah, writing Medium articles that highlight your skill sets and your projects and things like that. That could be another substitute for your website as well. All right, and then next what I love to do personally, which is what I'm doing right now is showing my skill sets and everything I do on YouTube. Now, what I love about YouTube is that it is a free platform, right? So people of all socioeconomic statuses can reach this. It's free. That's the beauty of it. And because of that, you can showcase and highlight your work and anyone can see it. So even if it's a simple, just like screen share and update on what you're doing throughout your projects, that could be a good thing, right? You just want to really tell that story and make sure you're telling your story properly. So YouTube is a great resource for that, just to upload content and videos easily and have it just on stand by your collection, right? Khan and Samir, they are a very popular creative podcast. They always describe your YouTube channel as being this sort of catalog. You are building a catalog for people to watch and browse and listen to. And that is essentially what you're trying to do, but with your project and your work, right? So whatever you post on YouTube, that is also a reflection of who you are, what your skill sets are, what you're going to be doing, and what you could offer for a future employer or whatever role it might be. Last but not least, let's talk about social media, which is LinkedIn. I would say LinkedIn is very underrated in my opinion. It is a very powerful tool where people, again, of all socioeconomic statuses can come and just highlight their work. Pretty much everything that I just said upon like website, YouTube, GitHub, it needs a place to be seen and shared and networked, right? Ugh, I hate that word network, but it needs that, right? So because of that, you want to have your LinkedIn really highlight all of these bodies of work, right? You want to showcase that and highlight that. So LinkedIn is a very powerful tool to do that. So when you're done creating these portfolio pieces, these projects on your website, YouTube, GitHub, whatever it might be, then from here, it needs a place to be distributed. So use LinkedIn as that tool, connect with people, showcase your work. That's what I've been doing recently where I post a lot of these data videos actually on LinkedIn and it's been getting good impressions and views and things like that. And it helps put my body of work out there. Just people in the tech industries especially can see what I'm doing and they can be like, oh, that guy is doing great work. I want that guy because it's all about first impression. That's all about just knowing that one, you're also real. I swear that in this technological age, there's just a lot of scams and just fake people and just, you never know who's real, right? So when you have a platform like LinkedIn, it's like another source of verification, which is always a plus and always a win. But yes, LinkedIn is a great source for that as well. All right, let's breathe. Let's take a second, breathe in and breathe out. That was a lot. And if I'm being 100% honest, a lot of these things for me has been a work in progress over time and are things I'm still working on even in this moment. This video right now is an example of that. I am still trying to create things to highlight me and showcase me better, but honestly, it might feel overwhelming, but just take it one step at a time and you'll be surprised at how far you can get. Baby steps really go a long way. But yes, a common phrase that's definitely said is that perception always trumps reality. So no matter what exactly is happening, make sure that you are being perceived as this type of person or this other type of person. Like whatever you want to be perceived as, that will always trump what you actually are. And that can be a good or a bad thing, but definitely use it to your advantage, right? Whatever you're being perceived as, just make sure it's not a negative. Make sure it always shoots up into positivity and you are able to just highlight your strengths and ultimately what just makes you, you. Ooh. Ah.
But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. That was a longer video than I expected. But I hope you guys enjoyed. You enjoyed my little rant on how to you know, post your data project and things like that. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have an amazing day. It is beautiful. It is sunny. It is summertime. So enjoy the weather, touch some grass, and just have a great and happy summer. See you guys next time. Bye.